Good afternoon, Top. Welcome to the Task Podcast. It's uh, yeah, great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Matt. It's, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I've been really looking forward to it, and you know, a few things to cover. And I know we've you know kind of had chats on email back and forth. So, um, but I will have done a little bit of an intro uh, to to yourself and your background. But it'd be great if you can just uh, kind of broaden that and and just you know give our audience. Uh, the, the, the kind of brief what you do, uh, Big Cup, and and yeah, your 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 role in in the sector. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Top. Uh, I am Thai, and I've been doing. Uh, I've been in the blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, industry for for eight years now. I was one of the very first persons in Thailand to educate, to advocate, uh, to everyone about Bitcoin and its potential. Um, it, during those eight years, I've founded two companies. Uh, the first one was called, was called Coins.co.th. It was uh, the, the, one of the very first Bitcoin wallets in the country. Uh, back then, people did not understand what Bitcoin was. People thought Bitcoin was a Ponzi scheme, money laundering, you know, drug money, toy money. You know, uh, don't go anywhere near it. That was the, the general perception. And back, back in the days, um, you know, a lot of uh, regulators, many regulators were you know, investigating on our companies and myself. So uh, a lot of uh, those were tough times, but uh, eventually we got through and, uh, you know, Gojek acquired uh, the group. Uh, and then uh, BitCup is now my second uh, company. Um, we are now the largest blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, companies in Thailand. Under our group, there are four companies that, uh, uh, does, that does different blockchain businesses. The first one is a you know the largest fully regulated cryptocurrency exchange in in the country, which controls ninety six point seven percent market share in Thailand right now. So uh, almost everyone you know that that trades uh, Bitcoin uses Bitcup in in Thailand uh, at the moment. Um, we have over fifty billion uh, baht of customers' assets with us right now, and the daily average of trading volume is around eight eight uh, uh, eight thousand. Um, uh, 8 billion baht per day to 10 billion baht per day um, on, on trading volume. And the second company is called BitCup Chain uh, and NFT Markets. Uh, so uh, the second company's aim is to create another uh, marketplace, which is a non fungible token market. And we already launched the BitCup Chain uh, as an infrastructure for people to tokenize their assets cheaply, efficiently. Uh, and we also have a native coin called Cupt as an operating system in the uh, BitCup chain. And the third company is called BitCup Academy. We have, um, it, it is, our, our vision is, is to create an open education system for the country. Uh, so we, we have uh, monthly meetups, uh, online meetups, uh, physical meetups, and you know, classes uh, every week to educate the customers on how to buy, how to sell, how to send money overseas with cryptocurrency, how to open accounts. And then the last company, the fourth company is called uh, BitCup Ventures. This company is, is, is set up to, to invest in other startups and, and protocols. So we invest in other startups that have potential synergies within our group. Um, so we invested in a few game five play to earn games uh, in a revenue sharing model. We, we have a different market thesis to, to the previous traditional finances um, where we believe it more in the intellectual capital than the physical assets. So we, we invest in things like you know, gaming strategies. Uh, monet- we, can, we believe that we can monetize you know, stra- gaming strategies and you know, play to earn games. Those intellectual capital are worth more, th- more than physical assets. Uh, this is our market thesis. And we also invest in protocols. And, and, and the company is, I would say, one, one of the most profitable startup uh, in, in the Thai startup history. I think, I think the most profitable startup in the Thai startup history. Uh, right now we have uh, uh, 1,478 employees and, under our group. And this year we will be making a, at least you know, 5 billion baht of, of revenue. Um, with a net profit of two billion, two billion baht, two, two to three billion baht of, of net profits. So that's around a um, hundred million US dollars of net profit. And if we were to times this by a PE ratio of ten, this would put us a, to be a first profitable unicorn in the country. 
um, and this is this has been uh, my journey so far uh, in during those eight years. Um, there were a lot of tough times um, and and good times, and uh, and and now we are we are we are like a leader in the cryptocurrency and, and blockchain space in in Thailand. Thank you. Great. Well. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, congratulations, a, a real success story, but it, it, you know, it's not just a story. It may also be the beginning of another story because I think, you know, where, where, what you're seeing today and, you know, certainly you've come a long way, but there's a lot going to happen, uh, you know, over the next 10 years, clearly 10, 10 to 15 years, which, you know, kind of begs my, my first question, really. There's been a lot of focus on on the sector, um, you know, in the last 12 months for one reason or another. And, um, you know, I, I speak to lots of different people every week and there are the kind of believers and then there are the the kind of non-believers there's not much of a there's not much leeway in between and you know a lot of people are kind of grappling with this you know where is this space going what is happening with crypto you know what are we going to be seeing you know 10 15 years from now which i know is a long way ahead but i i'm assuming you would have a real good kind of hold on that and a good vision of that you know where do you see this whole sector going and how is it going to kind of encompass the economy and what are people going to be dealing with in terms of you know crypto in everyday life 10 years from now sure uh matt you were absolutely right there were like two groups here very different groups strong believers and and really like haters and non <laughs> totally non-believers here this is what i have witnessed in the past like eight years but I would say the non-believers are getting less and less as we as we move forward. Back then, I remember when I first started the, my, my first first company, there were a lot of non-believers. People thought Bitcoin was a Ponzi scheme, mm. drug money. You know, I got a, a, an investigation letter from the anti-money laundering officers. Uh, you know, I got another letter from the Bank of Thailand. Thought, you know, really, uh, they, they thought that I was creating a competing currency, you know, uh, which a private company do not have rights to create, you know, a, a legal tender, right? Um, and I, I even got a letter from the revenue department if we were hiding taxes. How do we pay taxes wow. with these things, right? So there were a lot of issues um, back in the days. Um, uh, you know, I would not repeat the same thing again. Right? It was really tough. Um, but as we, you know, move forward in the future, we see, we see that the non-believers are getting less and less. Uh, as, you know, as, you know, education catches up eventually, People are, you know, get to understand blockchain to the to the core uh, more and more each day. Um, you know, people get to you know, the the education is really accessible to more and more people as we move move along. And as you can see, you know, Thailand is one of the very first country to regulate this space. We were actually the one of the very first exchanges in the world to have a proper license from the SEC uh, Security Exchange Commission. And this license is issued by the Ministry of Finance. So uh, if you look at BitCup, we are already a, considered as a financial institution, um, uh, but under the SEC, not under the Bank of Thailand, right? And we are holding a lot of customers' assets uh, right now. Um, and if you, you know, if you were to be in Bangkok, you will see BitCup everywhere, you know, uh, on billboards, on SkyTrain, you know, everywhere. Um, we, we already have 2.3 million customers and we were one of the fastest growing uh, companies uh, in Thailand in the, in the last three years, averaging a, a thousand percent growth consecutively for four years. Um, and the space is one of the fastest growing as well. Um, it's it's just definitely a sunrise industry. And if you, if you have heard the development, recently the Bank of Thailand is issuing a central bank digital currency which will be coming out uh, in the first quarter of next year, less than six months from now. Uh, and we see not just the central bank digital currency that are coming out, that is coming out. We also see, you know, uh, financial institutions coming into our space. The biggest banks in all of the biggest banks in Thailand has their DeFi team. They have their um, you know, exchange team. They are applying for this exactly the same licenses as us now. You know, they're willing to put crazy amount of money into the space. They're believing that, you know, finance 3.0 is here to stay and it's going to be the future. What they, they have been doing, finance 1.0, you know, bank branches, ATMs, money counting machines. Those are the old days. Um, and it's a sunset business, businesses. They see their profit margins, margins uh, declining every day. 
and they're preparing for you know finance 2.0 and finance 3.0 and DeFi exchange decentralized exchange protocols you know um uh, blockchain uh, and uh, and a financial platform and not just financial institutions we also see that companies from you know publicly listed listed companies are opening up accounts with us to buy bitcoin as their reserve mm. right uh, both companies uh, in the stock exchange and private private companies also that are outside of the stock exchanges, they are now opening up a corporate account with us. Right? So we see clear trends that even the central bank is entering the space, creating their own central bank digital currency. Uh, financial institutions in Thailand are all coming in, sub- setting up their DeFi team, believing in three, finance 3.0. We see, you know, publicly listed companies and private companies opening up accounts with us, you know, get stocking up on Bitcoin as their as their reserve. And you also see real sectors now, right? Uh, partnering with Bitcup, you know, people can pay for condos, their apartments and condos with cryptocurrency. We par- we partnered with all the pretty much all the biggest real estate players now in Thailand. Uh, they are all connected to our gateway, crypto payment gateway, and they could generate some sales actually like real transaction with people customers buying you know condos apartments with with crypto and also luxury cars like supercars all the supercars brand are connected to our platform as well so we can see you know real sectors you know joining in on this uh, cryptocurrency uh, development and use cases and you know, today is the first day in Thailand that even the real estate, one of the biggest real estate players is launching their own coin, ICO, real estate act token. Sense. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, I've seen a number, actually just to your point, I mean, I've seen a number of these, um, these yeah, real estate being, being put out there and, you know, real estate companies adopting um, uh, Bitcoin as, as a way of, of paying. Obviously the volatility is one of the challenges, you know, that, how long do you think that volunt- volatility will last for? Because obviously it gets tricky using, you know, um, a currency to buy something when the volatility is, is is the way it is. Do you think that will cease at some point in the kind of foreseeable future? Sure. Um, the uh, the volatility uh, question it comes down to the uh, basic of uh, fi- finances, right? Once uh, when the user base is small, the volatility is high. You know, when any exogenous shock hits the market, then it would have a big impact. But once the user base grows uh, bigger and bigger, the volatility drops as the same exogenous shock hits the market. Right? Uh, I, I, guess, I guess the best analogy is to look at this in, uh, let's say, uh, if the user base is a, uh, of Bitcoin is a swimming pool uh, in the early days, as a swimming pool, mm-hmm. exogenous shock is the equivalent of a fat person. Right? When a fat person jumps into a swimming pool it creates a big splash high impact like volatility but as user base grows that swimming pool is no longer a swimming pool but becomes an ocean or a sea a sea or a beach uh, once you know the same exogenous shock you know a fat person jumps into an ocean uh, he she barely you know has an impact on the overall mass of the ocean the volatility volatility drops this basic of finance applies to all kinds of assets you know, the US dollars, gold. Imagine if people stop using dollars today and the, the overall user base becomes a swimming pool, then you will see dollars moving at 20% up and down every day. You know, you know it's, it, it applies to all, all kinds of assets. And the reason why we don't see volatility in dollars and gold is because the mass is huge. It's the, the, the user base is huge already. Right? So as we move along in the future, we, we have seen this exponential trend of Bitcoin wallets being opened every year. So for the first eight years, there were 28 million uh, Bitcoin wallets opened in, opened in the first eight years. And when we enter, entered the ninth and the tenth year, only those two years, we generated 22 million more wallets, right? We, we went up to 50, millions of, 50 million wallets o- o- overall, right? We see an exponential increase in the number of wallets being opened. And for the next 10 years, I would say it's not going to be an additional 50 million wallets. It's going to be... You know, we're going to hit 1 billion, you know, cryptocurrency wallets uh, worldwide uh, in the next decade, whether direct or indirect usage. And the volatility would drop as we move forward in the future. But right now, it doesn't matter. The volatility has no impact on the payments 
And the reason is because we have companies like BitCup as an exchange. We act as a payment gateway for real sector customers, right? Uh, imagine if a person, say David, wants to buy his condo or his 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 noodles, right? Uh, with a, a cryptocurrency, his with his with his Bitcoin. Uh, and if you know Sansri or Ananda Condo has an uh, an account with us already, they can all turn on the auto 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 hedge function and auto withdrawal function. Right. Once they, David scanned that QR code, there will be a quotation popping up and said, this is the equivalent price of Bitcoin in terms of Thai baht at that, at that current market rate. And if, if David press enter, he already agrees that he would auto sell at the market rate. Right? The, so the Bitcoin would be wired to the BitCup exchange and we would automatically, automatically put, it, put in a market, market order, not a limit, limit order, right? a market yep. order. And then it would be you know, automatically exchanged into Thai baht. And the role of BitCup as a payment gateway is to wire that Thai baht to, to that real estate players or to, to that merchant you know, selling noodles on, on, on the side street. Right? And that transaction would take three seconds, right? 24, 24 hours, seven days per week. We already connected to all the banking rails, local banks in Thailand. So it doesn't matter if today's Bitcoin price is, you know, 1.5 million baht or 2 million baht or 10 million baht, right? As, so long as the users agree that this is the price, the exchange rate that they're happy to pay, the receiver, you know, doesn't need to know if which, which coin the customers is, is paying for their condos or, or noodles with, because at the end of the day, they would only see fiat currency arrive being in their bank accounts in the same manner that they are accepting credit cards or, or paper money. Right? So uh, we, we call it, we humanize, we humanize the process, right? We make it easy and we hide all the complexity of blockchain and private public key, you know, um, um, algorithm. Cool. Makes a lot of sense. Cheers for, for explaining that slightly on a, on a different tangent, NFTs. I really want to, get in a little bit on into nfts with you um you know a lot of it, there's a huge buzz around nfts at the moment of course the emergence in initially in the art space but um uh, and actually i know you guys have just launched something this week right with is it power of passion did i get the is that is yeah. that the right title which yeah. is linked yeah. to what miss miss universe thailand um so nfts around that which which kind of good segue to the question really you know this nft space i mean i get a lot of questions about it because as a business we're going we're, we're going into this sector from a very socially focused point of view uh and we've got opinions on on the real value of nfts what you know how big do you see this nft space and where else do you see it being used i know that's a very big question but i'm just wondering um you know beyond the stuff you're doing with with miss universe thailand and you know what where else can we see nfts is it all about gamification? Is there much, is there, you know, other use cases beyond the kind of uh, the art and, and, and the gamification that you're seeing? Uh, to be honest, I have never been more excited about the future. <laughs> I can tell you for sure in certainty that in the next five years, you know, gaming would never be the same again. Mm. And in the next five years, advertisement industry would never be the same again. And the entertainment industry also would never be the same influencers industry would never be the same again. It's a big disruption coming in. And we know that it's already working. You know, for the first time in human history, you can play games and earn money, you know, earn your living. For the first time in human history, you can watch advertisement and earn money, real money for the first time. For the first time in human history, right? You can interact with your, you know, the influencers or the artists that you love on a much, much deeper level, not just his or her voice. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we, we, we love an artist more than just his, more than the, the basic layer of his or her voice. We may love the moments or the in, 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 intangible assets that uh, we, we love about that person. Um, but the traditional media cannot extract that mo or monetize different layers of artists or, uh, or the musicians that, uh, that we love. And, you know, we created this NFT market and we're going to be launching in October. And, you know, we already have a lot of real sectors lining up to partner with us. You know, Miss Universe Thailand, for example, 
for the first time in human history, we can actually tokenize, you know, a long history of Miss Thailand, Miss Universe Thailand. We can have, uh, you know, uh, action tokens by, uh, you know, celebrities and, you know, uh, role models. You know, for the first time, we can have, you know, uh, musicians uh, that we love sing a happy birthday clip or video. And we can monetize that, right? And pay that with a social token. We call it fans token. We create, we create a win-win-win business models where, uh, you know, viewers can watch videos and collect digital collectibles, uh, you know, tokens. Uh, and, and the viewers can use those tokens in exchange to redeem uh, actions from, um, you know, the YouTubers or the influencers. For example, he can, you know, the U YouTubers can sing the, you know, happy birthday song for the viewers uh, in exchange for those collected tokens uh, up to maybe a thousand tokens mm -hmm. so that customers would at least watch his or her video at least a thousand video before he or she can redeem that. And, you know, for those without the time to watch videos, but, but with the money to pay, they can also put in a limit order on BitCup exchange and say, guys, I don't have enough time to watch all the videos, but I love this person. And tomorrow is my friend's birthday. I need to surprise him with an intangible asset. I don't want to buy shoes and bags for him or for her. I want to buy something that money cannot buy. Something, you know, closer, deeper, uh, you know, engagement with the he or she is crazy about this celebrity. I want to send you know, him or her a, a happy birthday personal clip, a video clip, but I don't have enough time to watch, to, to collect all these tokens. I'm going to put in orders uh, on BitCup. Anyone has a token to sell, 10 baht, anyone want to sell, 100 baht. So there'll be a bidding uh, you know, target going. So we create a win-win-win situation for the, uh, for the influencers. They owe, uh, they would have more engagements with their viewers and more, more views, more, co more content um, engagements. Uh, for the viewers, uh, for the first time in history, we can, you know, make it into a living for those without jobs and, you know, they need to generate incomes. They can just watch videos all day and that's already a, a new profession. And those with, you know, with money but without time, he or she can buy something that money cannot buy, intangible, you know, assets. Right. So we created a win-win-win situation. And we also partner with a lot of real sectors right now. Um, as you know, COVID affected a lot of real sectors in the old economy where people do not want to enter the department stores or you know, go outside of their houses. We can you know, increase foot traffic of traditional businesses and restaurants. For example, we can partner with Barbecue Plaza. Right? And if Barbecue Plaza wants to generate more sales, we we can say that, you know, you know, customers would have to physically enter this particular store at this particular location to collect digital sorts in a game, game five, game, earn to play, mm -hmm. right? If you want to stay at home, play your games, you'll never get this sort, no matter how much money you have in the game. The only way to get this special sort is to go into this particular physical store physically and scan the QR code. and cool. add That's a cool idea at least consume a, you know, a, a meal there. And then, you know, barbecue plaza on the back end would be buying a bulk of gaming items with us and say monthly, I need a, a million sorts so I can give to a million customers on the back end. So we would monetize, you know, NFT, you know, games, uh, products, items to the real sectors. And the real sector said, you know, on average, I'm paying BitCup 20% on each source, but but my profit margin on food is 200%. I don't mind. As long as you increase my food traffic, I, I can, you know, you know as, bring, just bring customers to my store, right? And customers would, would win also because once they consume the, the meal, they can sell the sorts on a secondary market and they can earn a living. Maybe they, that could be a free meal for, for the customers because they would already earn a profit on selling that, selling that sort, right? So we can increase food traffic to different cities also. Phuket, Chiang Mai, you know, not just in Bangkok, right? Uh, and even condos, you know, if condos want people to visit the actual space to experience, you know, uh, what the condos would look like, they could partner with us to, you know, to collect digital, you know, items to generate more sales. And this is where we see the real sector, you know, blending in with the digital economy uh, use cases. 
And this is going to be huge. We, we can increase almost sales of everything. Uh, green tea bottle, if you want to, in, to increase green tea sales, you can scan QR code you know, on the cap, right? Uh, or under the cap uh, to, you know, to, uh, you know, to gamble on different game items, um, you know, and, but you have to buy that, that green, tea, green tea bottle first, right? So we can partner with the real sectors and to increase sales in many dimensions. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited. You know, we can uh, create a win-win-win situation here. Nobody has to lose out, right? Um, advertisers get to have more engagement, more viewers. You know, uh, the ones uh, you know sharing uh, the media companies, they they can earn and you know more money with the advertisers now because they can create more engagement with the users. For the first time in human history, users also earn money from watching advertisements and play games and you know interact with their uh, celebrities. So uh, I think it's, it's going to be, you know, very a huge disruption coming in in the next five years. I absolutely share your excitement and thanks for sharing all that because some of those, um, you know, some of what you explained now I hadn't really considered. W what is interesting, I think, you know, I asked you about NFTs throughout all of that answer, you didn't use the word NFT, which I think is so important because part of the confusion I think right now is people hear this word NFT and it, you know, they have to start understanding the technology, which frankly, that isn't what you need to understand in terms of the application in everyday life. And, you know, those examples that you gave in every one of those situations, the, the person that's involved, whether it's the, the, the shopkeeper getting more customers in, whether it's the, uh, you know, the player uh, or individual coming in and, and getting the, you know, the, the tokens, they don't need to understand NFTs. They just need to be part of this community process, which is, you know, why it's it, it's very exciting, hugely disruptive. Um, you touched on a little bit there. I mean, how it could potentially help out, you know, restaurants that are, you know, during COVID. Are there any other insights you can share of how you could see it potentially disrupting and, and adding value to the, to the charity sector, um, which is somewhere, you know, we're obviously in that sector, looking at ways that we can bring more, more value to social enterprises, nonprofits. Have you, are there other use cases that, that you can see where it can really kind of bolster fundraising, uh, you know, social projects? Sure. Uh, if you talk about the fungible token first, like Bitcoin and Ethereum and other current, current cryptocurrencies in the market, a fungibility property is, is one of the uh, characteristic of, of money, right? Uh, if, Functibility means, uh, you know, uh, every one baht is the same. Every five baht is the same. Every gold baht is the same. You know, we, we call it fungible uh, tokens. And NFTs is, is the non-fungible token. So every, every uh, item is unique, very unique, right? And if you talk about the fungible token first, how it would change the donation industry. Right now, there's no transparency, no accountability in the donation space. Right? When... When you see a person is crying in front of a television, uh, say if 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 I'm in Bangkok, uh, a person in Chiang Mai was in, affected by I don't know forest uh, or uh, burn, uh, fire or you know flooding, flooding, and then the reporter is is interviewing her on TV. Um, and if I'm based in Bangkok, I want to donate money to help out that lady, say in in the television that I see. Um, the current process has no transparency or accountability. I would bring up a red, maybe Red Cross uh, and said, I need to, I, I, would, I would like to donate, donate a thousand baht, say, for example, to the lady in, the, you know, in Chiang Mai in front of the television that I see right now. And the Red Cross would say, uh, just donate to this general, uh, general charity and we'll, help, we'll try our best to help out. And, you know, that one thousand baht that we donated, we never, you, you know, some of that goes, go, goes to the, some of that go, goes to the uh, OPEX, you know, operating costs of running the charity already. And the rest, we never know if that it reaches that lady that we see in, in camera, in, in, on TV, right? With the arrival of cryptocurrency, you know, f for the first time in human history, we can send donation on TV screen, right? That lady, if she knows that she's live on, on the, a live table television, and she's affected by a flood or forest fire, she can just bring up a piece of paper with a QR code and said, help me. You know, everyone watching the TV at that moment, they can just put, it, uh, put out their phone, put up that, you know, bring up their phone and with, with two clicks, right? The first one is you know, to scan the QR code, code in front of the TV screen. 
And the second step is to click send a payment, right? And, you know, Bitcoin would arrive within 30 minutes, bypassed all the intermediaries with full transparency and, and accountability directly to her wallet, right? And what is interesting also, not just in terms of transparency or accountability is micropayments. Mm -hmm. We can donate 0 0.0000001 Bitcoin, right? So for the first time in human history again, Cryptocurrency makes micropayments e economical, right? feasible. Right now, we can never transfer 5 baht or 10 baht or 50 cents overseas because the, the actual cost is already much higher. Right? But with the cryptocurrency you know, properties of micro uh, divisibility properties, then we can just scan QR code and within 30 minutes um, for Bitcoin, but much shorter for other cryptocurrency, uh, short, shorter wait time, the money would hit right away. Right, uh, and we can wire very, very small amounts that banking industry cannot offer that product or that capabilities. So we can di you know, donate in small amounts, 50 cents each or, or around the world. Say if, if, the, if that video is not on television, but on YouTube and everyone is watching YouTube and Facebook Live right now, she can crowd funds from the rest of the world for her flood, uh, you know, victim. Right. And even though they may seem tiny, like 50 cents each, but the power of the crowd, right? Everyone around the world would collect huge lump sum payments for the uh, donation industry. So again, donation industry is going to get disrupted also with much better, you know, transparency, accountability, and micropayments feature. But on the NFT side, uh, you know, recently Jack Dorsey, he could auction his first tweet okay, for 80 million bucks. Um, it's, it's amazing how, how we can bring this scarcity concept into the online world now, right? Before, say, if, if I'm holding a microphone that Michael Jackson sings in his last concert, right? This microphone would cost a lot. It's, it's not a unique, it, it's, it's a unique microphone, which is very different from the ones being produced every day, because this is the last microphone that Michael Jackson, you know, holds before he died, right? Before he passed away on his last concert. People would auction this, right? Uh, because it creates a physical scarcity due to the event, right? But once we take the photo of this microphone and upload it online, it costs nothing because in the past, the marginal cost of production uh, of the internet is zero, right? Imagine if we're talking uh, with, uh, I'm talking with you right now, right, Matt? And if we were to add 500 people in the same room today, the marginal cost of production would be zero right? because it costs us nothing for us to, to, to do a live show. But if we were to do this physically, right, me and you talking in a room, and if we were to add 500 additional people in, we would have to, first, first of all, find 500 more seats. Each seat in a hotel room would cost maybe, maybe 1,000 baht each and waiter, waitress serving food, right? The additional cost would go up in tandem with the output. But with the arrival of the internet, the marginal cost of production is zero. Once we take a photo of that microphone that Michael Jackson sings on his last day, the cost is nothing. We cannot monetize it because you can copy that photo if, mm. as much as you like. It, internet creates what we call the digital, digital abundance aspect. Mm. But for once, you know, the, with the arrival of blockchain and NFT market, you can actually convert this digital files of digital photo of that microphone into you know a scarcity digital scarcity file a file with digital scarcity property right there's this one unique uh, you know photo that you can identify that this is real authentic and you know we are able to authenticate on, on blockchain that this is the real one and definitely the unique one and only in the world, right? Very similar to the physical property of that microphone now that persons and people are auctioning because there's only one, this type of microphone in the world, the one that Michael Jackson holds on his last day. Right? That's why um, Jack Dorsey, you know, the, 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 he, his, he auctioned his first tweet, which is equally an exciting event before Twitter gets this big. It was the, the very first humble tweet before you know, Twitter becomes a giant as it is today. You know, if you to, com to compare to the event that Michael Jackson sings his last song before his death, 
they're both very important events. But for the physical event, you can monetize the microphones. But for the mm. digital events of the very first humble tweet by Jack Dorsey, we could not monetize that moment until the arrival of NFTs and blockchain. Right. So with charity, you can not you know in the past we can only auction physical assets, and you can you earn you know the money you earn from that auction you would donate to the society. Right. A lot of uh, millionaires, billionaires in Thailand, Thailand right now has have have their own charities right? named under themselves, and they usually sell like sport cars, supercars, or antique you know goods. Uh, that their families ha have been collected over the years, and they would donate those money to this back to the society. But for the first time in human history, you can sell digital products too, that are unique uh, in in properties too, and you can earn the money from digital auction and donate back to the society. Right, so we can sell intangible assets, not just phys tangible assets, going forward in the future. So money from donation would increase to maybe an order of magnitude more because now you can monetize different different hidden layers that we could not you know do in the past. Interesting stuff. I mean, to your first point, you know, obviously the the the, the transparency and the ability to you know make micro payments. I mean, yeah, we're seeing huge application for that with Stella because of their. Uh, you know, really low transactional cost of of getting money across borders. So, and to your second point, yeah, I mean, it's we're we're running some NFT experiments later in the year. So I will, you know, you know, when that happens, I shall let you know because it's going to be interesting to see how the market adopts it and and you know how some of these nonprofits can can benefit. So, um, kind of mindful of time, we're coming to the end. I'd be great, you know, in terms of knowing my audience, and there are definitely people who will be listening who are just going you know, where do I start? How, you know, what do I do next? You know, I'm hearing all this stuff about Bitcoin and blockchain and, you know, what's your advice to people you know, learning about the space, making maybe their first, uh, you know, investment? What, what, you know, where should they go? How should they learn? Just, just some, some advice from, from you would be great to, to kind of close out. Sure. Um, first of all, um, we don't need to rush into the space, right? We need to make sure that, we have the right education, right? We have we have you know a, a complete understanding of how blockchain works, of how cryptocurrency works before we enter the space, because you know at the same time, uh, you know the, when when and and the industry is so hot, uh, there are a lot of scammers also. Right? A lot of uh, people are uh, you know uh, you know trying to mislead other people. So we need to be careful. We need to get access to the right education. Uh, I would say maybe try to open up your first cryptocurrency wallet. It doesn't cost anything to to download the BitCup app and, and create a create your BitCup account. Uh, you can you know uh, for those who know who know how to sign up for a Facebook account, uh, you would know how to sign up for a BitCup account. You just use your email, you know, enter your password. Uh, very important. Make sure you have a two-factor authentication. Also, it's another app that you can download to your phone. Uh, you can use Authy or, or LastPass Authenticator app or Google Authentication. Uh, you, can, you can download this on Google's uh, App Store um, to make sure that, you know, if you lost your password online somewhere to a hacker or someone else that knows your password. And by the way, do not use like your date of birth or, or the same password as your Facebook or email. Don't use the same set of password. And, but once a hacker, hacker or someone else got access to your password, they, if you turn on your two-factor authentication, a hacker or that person, that thief would, be, would have to steal, steal your phone as well. It's a, it's a second set of passwords, second layer of password that changes every 10 seconds. And you need to get enter your, into, into your, the app on your phone that uh, it's like a double password, right? To, to make sure that your account is fully secure, right? And once you create an account, uh, you need to verify yourself first, right? Uh, we need to follow uh, uh, follow uh, on with the. We need to comply with the uh, lo uh, regulations on KYC, right? You know your customer. You need to validate yourself, right? We need to put in your first name, se second name, you know, uh, occupation, income, and you need to take a selfie holding holding your ID card, uh, so the team can verify it with the database. And if you fill in the correct uh, information, usually 
um, within 24 hours, uh, uh, the, your account would be ver verified, right? Uh, and once your account is set up, you, you need to also link your bank accounts to your BitCup account. And please do not use someone else's bank accounts because uh, the team would not let that pass or the money would get stuck into in, in the middle of the BitCup account uh, because we do not let other uh, people's cash out from your BitCup account. Make sure that your book bank has the same first name and surname as your BitCup account, first name and surname. Do not use your wife's account also. Uh, otherwise, the money would not be processed. Right? It would stuck and it would take like at least a week for us to, to, to return back the money. Right? Uh, make sure you attach your book, your own book bank to your BitCup account. And once the account is fully set up, maybe try to deposit a uh, hundred baht first uh, by scanning the QR code. And you would be surprised that the money would hit your, your BitCup account within three seconds. Like you can try this 24 seven, you know, 24 hours, seven days per week. We are already connected to all the local banking rails, uh, almost every, pretty much every bank uh, in Thailand. And once the money is, is in your BitCup account, you can try to put in a market, market order or a limit order as a buy order. Say if you want to try to buy Bitcoin first, right? Uh, a market order is when you're a price taker. You take what is best currently in the market uh, right now. You take it, you, you buy it right away at the current price. But the limit order is the price maker. You make the price. Right? You, whatever price that you feel you're happy that, with, you will wait for that price. You will put in the limit order to wait for the price to drop or to increase to the, the limit that you set. And we, it would auto execute once the price reaches, reaches that equilibrium point that you set earlier. It could take years if you put in an insensible price or it could take weeks, yeah, you know. But if you, if you want to buy right away, you can use a market order right, to, to be the price taker, not the price maker. Right? And once you have your Bitcoin new wallet, try to send the, the Bitcoin to your friends uh, you can you can send you know micro payments because you only buy like one one hundred baht of Bitcoin. Right? You can send zero point zero 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 one Bitcoin to your friend. Your friend needs to give you a your a public key for you to send to send your Bitcoin to. And once the the you send your Bitcoin, you can go to blockchain.info to check the confirmation time. Usually, you know after three confirmation or thirty minutes, Bitcoin would arrive in your friend's wallet. And make sure your your, your friend send your Bitcoin back. Uh, you can give your friend your public key, which is uh, accessible on your BitCup wallet. Every wallet would have, every BitCup wallet wallet uh, have their private keys, right? And we have, and once you're opening up BitCup wallet, uh, you will have a lot of pub, pub, uh, public keys on different coins. You automatic, automatically have many, 40 sub, sub wallets for different cryptocurrencies. So if you want to receive Bitcoin, you need to go into the Bitcoin wallet section and give the public public key of your Bitcoin wallet. And if you want to receive Ethereum, right, Ether, you go to your Ethereum wallet and give you, give out the public key of your Ethereum wallet. Do not give out your Bitcoin public key. It's not interoperable, right? And once uh, if your friends send you the Bitcoin back to your public key, try to sell it, right? market order or limit order. Like once you have uh, ma matched the order, uh, once you receive Thai bar, try to cash out. You know, usually it links with your, you must already link your bank account with your BitCup account. And it, it would normally take around three seconds for the money to hit your bank account, 24 seven, right? 24 hours, seven days per week. Once you complete the full loop, you can increase more money as you, know, as you get more you know, you know, comfortable with, with the process. And my advice would be to use the money that you can afford to lose. Do not, you know, lend, you know, you know, do not borrow, take out loans to speculate. Do not sell your houses, your cars. Do not put everything into this because it, all the investment has risks, right? Risk and return, high risk, high return. That's normal for all kinds of assets. Make sure that you have, you can afford that, you know, to lose or to speculate on the money that you can afford to lose. Not, not essential day to day like life money, right? Because usually those people that win, uh, win in the, in the market are those with really, really cold money they, when they, they can forget about them because the volatility is high. Uh, once it reaches the peak, I've been in this space for eight years now. One, once it reaches the peak, the price would go down to by 80%. Imagine if you put in a, a, a 1 million baht in 2000, uh, 
17, right? 18, when Bitcoin reaches the, the all time high of 600,000 baht per Bitcoin of uh, four years ago, and the price would drop right down to $3,000. Um, so that's 70% of your money, 80% of your money gone, right? Uh, 1 million baht, you would be left with 200,000 baht, right? 300,000 baht. People would panic if you use hot money that you need to do use day to day, right? So seven percent of my wealth gone. But people with really cold cash that they can forget about it. Right? If the if they hold through that period, right now one Bitcoin is like almost two million, two million baht, right? Back then it was six hundred thousand. That was the all time high. You would earn an an average return of three hundred percent in three years, which is one of the highest you know, return. Uh, all, all, all kinds of assets uh, in the world. Same in the first wave. Uh, it happens once every four years after Bitcoin halving. I entered the industry from the first Bitcoin halving, the first wave. The price went from $11 up to $1,150. That was the all-time high. Right? Mm. And imagine if you, you, you use hot money or something day-to-day -day essential money, and the price went down by 80%, down to $200 from $1,000. Thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Now, if you put in one million baht, you you would be left over with two hundred thousand baht. People would panic if you use hot, like essential money, right? Or if you borrowed someone else's money, or if you sell your houses or your or your cars for this. But if you were to use something that you can forget, money that you put aside for eight years, oh my God, one bitcoin was one thousand one hundred fifty dollars back then. Back then. Right? It's, it's the best return in the, of all kinds of assets in the last decades. So make sure you use essential, do not use essential money. Do not borrow the money to invest, to speculate. Do not sell your houses, your cars. Right? And don't copy your neighbors. You know, if your neighbors you know, um, bought a new car and you said, well, how did you do it? And he said, oh, I speculate on BitCup, use uh, you know, Bitcoin. You know, not everyone is in the right circumstances in life or situation or the right education. Make sure you don't rush the process. Don't just say, oh, he doesn't look, you know, smarter than me, but he can get a Mercedes now or, you know, I, I can do the same. Don't have that mindset, right? Don't borrow the money. Don't sell your houses for this. Uh, make sure you're in the right state of mind. Uh, you have the stomach to ride over, ride on the volatility wave. Make sure all the circumstances in, 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 your, in your situation is ready first before you get started. Cool. Sensible, sensible advice. So, um, yeah, look, pretty much at the end. So I appreciate you, you coming on, on again in terms of people wanting to follow you social media, you know, keep up to date with the stuff you're doing. What, what what's the, the best place, Twitter, Insta, do you want to just share your, your handles where you'd like people to go and follow you and, and, and see what you're up to? Sure. Uh, well, th thank, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me uh, on this show. Uh, it's great, uh, you know, pleasure, and it was a, you know, a very productive uh, session. I hope the the, the listeners enjoyed this uh, session, um, the discussion. It's a very useful uh, and productive, um, you know, knowledge uh, for for the future. Also, um, you guys can follow me on. I'm pretty much on all the social media, um, but the most active one is 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 on the on. I have a Facebook page. Right, with almost a million followers now, you can search uh, Top Tira Youth uh, Official. So Top T O P P Double P. Right, top Tira Youth is my is my first name J I R A Y U T, and then Official. Um, you can follow that page. Um, it's a page that shares all the you know the future innovation and disruptions. We would we talk about so what is social banking, what is cloud kitchen, you know what is blockchain, what is central bank digital currencies. It's a page that would never talk about the traditional finances or stocks. We cool. would rather educate uh, about the future disruption. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. I'm all on all, all social media. You, you, you just search top tier yet official and the official page would come up. Cool. Well, I will, I will leave those links in the, in the notes for anyone who, who's, who's listening to the pod, but um, yeah, look, thanks for your kind words. Also really, you know, it's, it's been productive. It's been interesting and insightful for me to, um, you know, to, to hear some of your kind of thoughts and opinions on, on the sector. So, and I look forward to, you know, speaking again, meeting hopefully as, as things start to open up here in Thailand and yeah, wish you all the best. So thank you. Thanks again, Top. Thank you very much, Matt. Have a great week.